Now, what are the clinical features of allergic rhinitis? So, there can be unknown exposure or a unknown exposure to an allergen, right? Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. Now, what are the clinical features of allergic rhinitis? So, there can be unknown exposure or a unknown exposure to an allergen, right? Many times you know it, sometimes like pollen exposure, sometimes you don't know it. Following which there will be onset of acute symptoms. The child will develop nasal congestion. This nasal congestion will be more prominent at night. So, parents will say one side or both side naak band ho jata hai. The nasal congestion happens, but it is more at night. Second, there will be sneezing. There will be rhinorrhea. The rhinorrhea in these children is always clear, watery rhinorrhea. You don't, and it is bilateral. You don't find it to be unilateral rhinorrhea. You don't find it to be purulent. Purulent rhinorrhea or strictly unilateral symptoms take the diagnosis away towards the other possibilities than allergic rhinitis. Plus, there will be nasal itching. Because of nasal itching, the child will have a tendency to do nose picking. The child will put his fingers into the nose and because of that, the child can develop epistaxis as well. So, epistaxis can sometimes be seen as a sequela of uh, allergic rhinitis. Plus, there will be ocular symptoms because of conjunctival inflammation, low-grade conjunctivitis which is often present, which will be in the form of watering from the eyes. Redness and some degree of photophobia. So, these are the typical symptoms that you will find developing in patients of allergic rhinitis. Typically, there is no fever or fever if it is present, it is incidental in nature. Then, what are the physical findings of allergic rhinitis? Potential MCQ can be asked based upon these physical findings. There are three important physical findings that you should know. First is this finding. What happens is, children have a tendency to, you know, whenever they will have a nasal congestion or nasal block, what they will do is using the palm of their hand or sometimes using the index and middle finger, they will try to pull up their nostril like this. You will often find children doing like this. They are having nasal block and they do like this. See from the side. This is called as allergic salute. This maneuver which children do subconsciously is called as allergic salute. Because of repeated movements like this, you find that there is a transverse line which forms on the bridge of the nose which is called as transverse nasal crease lot of books incorrectly write it as this is uh, this line is allergic salute no allergic salute is the maneuver which produces the transverse line as you can see in this picture there is a transverse line which is present on the nose this is called as line produced by allergic salute so write down allergic salute is the maneuver which is done which produces a line called as a transverse line on the nasal bridge. Second is this, you will find that uh, children, mothers will complain that the child is having some blackish discoloration or you know erythematous to blackish discoloration around both eyes. This is called as allergic shyness. So around both the eyes, there will be some degree of hyperpigmentation happening. In older children, it is more blackish in nature. In very young children, around 5-6 years of age, up to that age, you will find it to be more pink red than black in nature. So, you will have allergic shyness, which is the second physical finding. And the third physical finding is this. Look at this child. This child is showing two physical findings. One is the presence of, can you see that there is some degree of allergic shyness which is present in this child around the eyes. Secondly, look at the mouth of this child you will find that these children have 
a condition called as allergic gape what is allergic gape these children will have a open mouth breathing they will breathe through the mouth why because due to allergic rhinitis and its long term complications you will develop some degree of adenoid hypertrophy tonsillar hypertrophy and so these children because they have a chronic nasal congestion they habitually start breathing from the mouth and because it starts from very young age in chronic mouth breathers you find in children some degree of remodeling of the chin or some degree of remodeling of the lower part of face happens you find that these children will have not only have a open mouth their part of lower jaw will be slightly backward slightly receding compared to the front of the jaw and it will produce an appearance as you can see can you see that there is some recession of the lower jaw in this child open mouth breathing with slight recession of the lower jaw that is called as allergic gape so the classic three physical findings are allergic salute allergic shiners and allergic gape in addition because of uh, you know chronic nasal breathing you you can also find some nasal crust to be present and chapped lips dry chapped lips also to be present in these children when you do anterior nasal examination using a speculum examination because we as pediatricians can only do a speculum examination you will find that there will be clear nasal secretions there will be edematous boggy and bluish mucous membrane with little or no erythema swollen turbinates will also be present which will further co cause compromise of the nasal cavity area for for proper breathing to happen and presence of purulent mucosa as well as intense erythema are more in favor of infectious rhinitis than allergic rhinitis please remember this point for clinical mcqs